there's so many different terms and variations of it, but essentially what you're around, who you're around, and the things you're feeding your subconscious. All of those played a role into where I'm at now versus where I was a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. What is up, our fellow Legacy Ninjas? When you think about it, relationships are prevalent and all around us at every time of the day. One of the biggest relationships is the one with yourself. But if you ask yourself the legacy that you're trying to build, who's part of your inner circle that's impacting your thoughts, your perceptions, how you go after things in regards to your motivation? Are you looking at the short game and only worried about the the here and now? Or do you have a bigger picture for what you wanna accomplish, for what you wanna leave behind when you're no longer here? And so your relationships can really impact and influence that legacy that you're building. A lot of times, people will get to the end of their lives and have the regrets that they didn't live the life that was true and authentic to who they were as an individual. So within this episode, Patrick and I talk about the power of relationships. Doing a deep dive and asking yourself, who is part of your circle that's helping you dream bigger and see the bigger picture? Or is your immediate circle those that have that instant gratification, the short-term game, and are missing out on making the impact and making the change that you want to see take place by the legacy that you're building? So after the episode, take the time and audit your circle. Who's in that circle? Who do you need to reduce time with? And who do you need to enhance the time that you're spending with to be able to produce the legacy that you envision for yourself. Other than that, enjoy the episode. We'll catch you later. Hola is up, our fellow Legacy Ninjas, Scott Brandt. Patrick Murakami here. How's it going, guys? Happy New Year. Yes, uh, beautiful year. Hopefully it's not something where you're going into this whole aspect of uh, New Year, New Me. It's really taking that step and seeing where you've come from your previous year and taking that and growing from it and learning from it. Um, You see so many people are like, new year, new me, and then they end up dropping off and having these goals and whatnot. So we were talking just a little bit in regards to a little change of the podcast, putting out these smaller episodes in between as we have guests come on and whatnot, just to talk about things that are coming up. And when we see and think about the idea of legacy having the other pieces that plays into it so one thing that was coming up was the idea of relationships and it's been something that i've had a couple pieces of content that i put out there just uh, as a, a aspect of reading and whatnot and i think you've talked about it too in regards to uh, the whole cold calling piece yeah you know um so for my own for my other business, you know, one of the things I committed to, and this started really back in uh, September of last year, but now I've just put an hour or a specific amount or a minimum amount behind it, was I was committed to cold calling to develop lead generation for my agents and for my team before I used to do it for me when I when I needed it. Mm. And it was kind of always like one of those things that when things got stagnant or if things kind of depleted, you know, you could always rely on that skill. But for me, it has been, you know, I'm not going to lie to you and say like, Oh, every single day, it's so positive. I get one to two new leads. I'm like, no, I told you there's, I mean, I started this back in September and you can go weeks. You can go. I I went months without gaining any of these things. Now, granted, Mm -hmm. For me personally, it wasn't a requirement, Mm -hmm. right? But what it was, was it allowed me to go back to rehash a skill that I had really gotten to the point where I was very good at it, but I had let it drop off. Mm -hmm. And so what wasn't working in September uh, didn't work in October, had some mild success in November and fell off completely in December five days in into January, I made up for everything in those four months. Mm. And so I think I posted on social media yesterday that I landed uh, eight referral partners with the expansion into Dallas, one into Phoenix, Arizona, 
and uh, six people who basically uh, gave me a yes to signing up for a class, mm-hmm. you know, to help digitize their business. Yeah. And when you look at that, you know, it's so easy to share in those success stories and you almost immediately forget about everything that led up to that. <laughs> right. And they, it, the, the old adage is true. You can get a million no's, but the one yes changes everything. Mm-hmm. But I did want to take a moment to realize too, that it wasn't like, it was, I do this every day and I get these results. Mm-hmm. It was clearly, look, I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted to be able to do and set that up for my team. The intentions were right. It wasn't coming from a sense of desperation, but it did also then teach me and humble me again to be like, you're not at the top of everything. Mm-hmm. Right. And so harnessing those skills and going back to the basics, it's kind of like, uh, I think of it as kind of like Rocky three, mm. right. Rocky and Clubber Lang. Uh, he gets beat and he has to learn to train with the guy that he worked and trained the hardest to fight before. Right. And it's kind of going back and starting all over because he had never fought the way that uh, Apollo Creed did. Mm. And so I kind of felt like humbled by that. And I also wanted to make sure that I remembered that that was how I was kicking off the year because who you surround yourself with, the influences that you have, the relationships that you build around you, the tribe, the circle, the influence, the ecosystem, as you and I call it, right? There's so many different terms and variations of it, but essentially what you're around, who you're around, and the things you're feeding your subconscious, all of those played a role into where I'm at now versus where I was a month ago, two months ago, three months ago Mm. in that business, which also helped create that success version because in October was really difficult right? Because I had to let somebody go who I thought could be a potential staple in my business. A lot of adjustments and changes, you know, to go with that. And then I also committed that even though we were drowning with leads, that I was committed that I was just going to finish out the year without looking for somebody else. Mm. And the production value went up so much more with just two of us. And, you know, a lot of that is contributed because my other agent came and said, let's do it. Yeah, you right. I've, I've got your back. If you've got meetings, forward your phone to me. And to know that that was a priority, or even now, it's part of that relationship piece. It's part of that piece of building that. So, yeah. you know, that's been, uh, like I said, we're just a couple of days into 2022. <laughs> I got to get used to saying that, man. Real briefly, before we kind of dive in a little bit further into this episode, congratulations to you and to us for hitting over 20 episodes. That itself to me is a huge accomplishment, a huge feat. I look back and I didn't even realize that we were over 20 episodes. I had to go and count it and I was like, did we really do that many? And I look back on the caliber of the guests that we had, many of them still having very much impacts on us today. And I just wanted to tell you and thank you personally, because I wouldn't have started this podcast journey without you. I'm also now looking at, you know, having kind of some of the individual projects, which I'm going to have you a part of as well, as you know, but, you know, we haven't shared that side of some of these things, but to hit over 20 podcasts and something that blew up suddenly for most people during COVID and haven't really had anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is testament to your persistence (laughs) and you finding some of these great and amazing guests that we've had. And honestly, man, I just wanted to say thank you for the experience that we had starting this, you know, last year. I appreciate that. And it's uh, it's one of those things, really, when you take the hard look and take a deep dive on it, it's unique to see how things go by very quickly. And just the fact that it's a, it's a process, it's a journey, and it's the relationship piece. And that's one of those things that I was talking about was your success or failure is really built upon the relationships that you have, your circle that you have. Because if you're looking at the people you're surrounding yourself with, are they focused on instant gratification that short term? Are their goals real small or maybe they don't have any goals? Or do you have people that are dreaming big, looking at the bigger picture and saying, what can we do to make a bigger impact that's outside of ourselves that ends up bleeding in and creating more relationships and feeding into that piece of the success aspect of it's your brick every relationship that you have good or bad is a brick in that wall that's being built 
And sometimes we get so overwhelmed because we're looking at the bigger picture and we're like, how's this wall going to be built? It's laying down the brick. And then looking at the relationships and asking yourself, are the people that you're surrounding yourself with, are they there to help elevate and push you? Or are they dragging you down because of how they view things, how they look at things? And what does that do to you as an individual? And so that's one of these biggest key factors that building success is not an individual thing because we can only go so far by ourselves, our perceptions, our experiences limits what we can do because it is us as an individual. But then when you look at that team concept and you have other people that have their experiences, their perceptions, and are looking for bigger things, it feeds into where it starts creating that tribe piece. You start feeding in and you start finding those key points that are going to help elevate you and get to that next level. And that's like, we've talked about it too, is do you have a big enough dream that's your vehicle that allows people to come in there, but then also while they're inside the dream, the vehicle, are they dreaming big? And are you able to jump into their vehicle and help them out on the other side of the fence. You know, what's really funny is that um, as you're talking about this, I kind of just think of like all the references from the 90s of the cartoons I used to watch, right? We think of like Scooby-Doo and that whole crew, right? And how they were just like, oh, let's go on an adventure, right? And they all just <laughs> jump in there and you hear the like it with their feet moving and stuff like that, right? And same with the Flintstones and even the Ninja Turtles, right? They had four of them. And then all of a sudden April's in there and Casey's in there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and so, but then you look at it kind of like on a grander scale. And I immediately think of kind of like Transformers Mm -hmm. where it's a global fight and you've, you've got one side or the other. And I think traditionally that's how we were taught the business world was right. You you're either on one side or the other. It's weird because the more that I get deeper into my business, the more I think in terms of bridging the gap that I did not, or that maybe places could not do in the corporate world. Mm. But I also at the same time understand the structure of the corporate world, which is much needed in small and local businesses to be able to step back and look at that. I also then take a look and step back at the relationship piece that we've been talking about. And I think individually you have those people that they cling to you for hope and inspiration. They're the ones who are willing to get into and watch the parade of you driving by, but then they are afraid to take that leap. You've got some people who are just waiting to jump on that float you know, and they want to be a part of it. And then you've got people who are kind of like seeing small glimpses of it from the back who are like, oh, that's a stupid float. Yeah. Right. Not understanding the time and energy and everything that took <laughs> to build that. And then you've got other people who are in the float who are much like you said, they're the dreamers. They're also putting their own versions of that together. They're also risking being judged and, yeah. and everything. Maybe it's not the same dream, but it is part of something bigger than yourself. And I look at those individual relationships. I look at, you know, the inspiration or motivation that I've got from people who were the least favorite, right? Mm -hmm. The people who were not fans and the people who were discouraging, the people who also said, you can't do this, yeah, right? There's a lot of inspiration, motivation from that, you know? So you went, as you're building these bricks, that could be a foundational piece and you just don't realize it at the time, Mm -hmm. right? You also have... Uh, You think back to, you know, the people who were like, talked you up and they were literally just big talkers, Yeah. right? They talked about sharing vision. They talked about having these big elaborate dreams, but they stay safe. And maybe it was enough to elevate you to a whole new level to get hyped for that next level. And even though they didn't go with you, that's another layer. And then you have usually oftentimes the spouse, but it's the one that basically is the realist in your dreams, (laughs) right? And again, maybe it's not your spouse, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your friends, you know, maybe it's your dog because you don't have a whole lot of relationships to bounce ideas off of. And he just looks at you funny and you're like, (laughs) you're right, I shouldn't do that, right? Um, (laughs) Whatever that may be. But oftentimes you have these realists uh, as part of your journey. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of everything. But that piece, right? And for a realist, it's really hard for them to go dream with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oftentimes they are thinking about the things that 
you haven't put into the equation yeah. the kids, <laughs> the finances, the we could lose everything, yeah. right? Because we're just so excited and so elated and so passionate about whatever it is that we want to do. That's a hard level to get to. It's a hard level to share and bring other people up to. Yeah. But having each relationship is fundamental. Having each relationship is going to be part of your bricks. Problem that most people think of is they're judgmental with the bricks that they get. Mm. This brick is ugly. It's not going to fit with the rest of the wall, <laughs> right? This brick is a different color. Yep. It doesn't fit with the rest of the wall. This brick is too small. This mm. brick is too big, right? But there is a place for it all because some of those broken pieces will fit in with the other broken pieces. Some of those bigger pieces may lay the foundation for the smaller pieces to go on top. Yeah. Laying a brick on its flat side may be different than laying it on its top side or its bottom side or flipping it horizontally, yeah. vertically. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do it. Yep. But at the end of the day, if you're looking at it from a big picture perspective, you will never know no one will ever know except you True. what those individual bricks were and how they played a role into it. But I promise you, you remember every single one when it's all said and done. Yeah. And I think it goes a little bit into the collective intelligence, the collective knowledge. Yeah. And the it, hive mind. Yeah. And it, it goes into the importance of having a coach. Yes. And so you're limited. Like I said, you're limited by your experiences, by your perspective and the power of having a coach, having somebody come in there that can help you guide you and not walk your path. This is your hero's journey, but be there as a mentor, as a, as a guiding post for you to look at things differently, to consider things differently and to help you embrace yeah. stuff, right? Just with knowing that you are going to fail, you are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience it all and you can't be afraid of it. Any of it. Yeah. You have to just be ready to embrace it for whatever version that you think you're getting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a coach comes into play because they put you at ease and they brace you to set yourself up to realize this is what's supposed to happen. This is yep. what's coming next, but this is also whether it's the barrier of yourself, the barrier of others, whether it's, you know, that death factor that you feel like you're going to have because you're taking a leap, yep. right. To understand, look, if you fall, we have a net to catch you. That net is your grit. And sometimes you have to fall and you have to learn that before you get back up again. And that's yeah. perfectly fine. That's normal. And so I love the analogy and I love what a coach stands for in our coaching session today with, you know, one of our clients, I think the word life coach is so, I think when people hear that, they automatically assume somebody's something's wrong with the person. Right. And there's yeah. this connotation of like, Oh yeah, I have to get a life coach. <laughs> right. But think about that for a moment. If you were to apply that into a situation for yourself, maybe somebody you know who's struggling, maybe somebody you know who's in abundance. Everybody needs a strategist in their life. Everybody yeah. needs somebody that can help them, that they can bounce ideas off of. And I think that's why there is such a big gap when it comes back, like, like especially for maybe people who are a part of something bigger than themselves, yeah. like the military, NFL stars, superstars, you know, um, you're part of something that's so much bigger than you. But when you come back, you feel just so disconnected because you had and you didn't maybe realize that you were building that hive mind and you had yeah. brothers and sisters and, you know, comrades in arms and brothers in arms and all those things to really show you that you weren't alone. Yeah. And when you come back, it's very different. You're isolated. You know, and we've heard that, you know, we heard that from Asante, you know, former NFL player. Uh, we see it all the time with, uh, you know, the military, you know, even uh, even a cop. Right. Mm -hmm. And with with Craig talking about his story, you know, going from NYPD to LAPD. Yeah. There's this weird construct that's out there. But there's so many things that are also out there designed to put us on this island, so to speak. Yeah. And when you surround yourself, right? And when, if you look around to see that those that are swimming and if we're not afraid to dip our feet in the water, we will find the people that we want. We'll find the people that we're supposed to be around. Yep. 
if we simply just <laughs> look, if we simply take action instead of just yeah. thinking about it. And I think that goes into what are you focusing on? Because what you focus on expands and it starts showing up. And so if you constantly are like, man, these opportunities aren't here, relationships that I want aren't around, that's because it's what you're focusing on. And I would say a couple of things here is for our legacy ninjas that are listening, take the time and audit your relationships. Who is it that you need to be closer to? And who is it that you need to cut your time with? reduce how much you're around that individual and really do a deep dive and say, am I getting to where I want to go based on the relationships and the circle that I have, or do I need to make that adjustment and search out and change the thought process, the ideas that I have. And then the other thing is if you're struggling, reach out to Patrick and I, let's have a conversation. Let's sit down and help you get to that level that you need to go. The, I think the thing for coaching is, Coaches will get you to a certain level. And then after that, it's time to find another coach that can get you to another level. And so it's understanding that people will take you to a certain level. And then it may be a matter of time to look and say, okay, what's that next relationship that I need to build to get to that next level? And don't be scared. Yeah, I've had two really pieces of things that were said to me that have really, really stood out in regards to relationships. The first one was when I was in really kind of the start of finding myself again, also coming out of a downward spiral of depression for years after the second uh, attempt of suicide. And I'll never forget what my friend Amber said. And she said, whether uh, their season or forever people come in and out of your lives as you need them to and you can imagine how I took that not only from coming through what I've gone through but also as a poet (laughs) to literally hear that line alone was so life-changing to realize that there were so many people out there that during a time when you need them or when you when they need you and you'd never really know and that you might say the most profoundest of things to them, where you might be the thing that teaches them something in a moment from a distance or, you know, by chance. And so when you look at that and you realize, am I in a season of need? Hmm. Am I in a season of giving to somebody else? Is it both? And this person who I barely know could end up being my best friend, my business partner, my ex lover, right? Like, I mean, you just never know what that construct looks like and that relationship looks like, but isn't that like a powerful thing to know that you could by choice evolve that you could with hard work, develop that you could make that something bigger if you choose to. And same concept with this other uh, thing that Aaron had told me. If you don't know my buddy Aaron, he is he's is of a different breed. Man, <laughs> talk about the guy that thinks outside the box. And the yeah. crazy part is we just found out, I forget the the terminology, but he cannot visualize. Mm. Right. And I guess it's a low percentage of people that have this, but there is zero imagination. Yeah. So as we and I are talking about like, you know, sports, we imagine ourselves maybe playing in there or, or, you know, what that looks like to envision that catch and all that stuff. He literally cannot come up with that concept mm. in his mind. He's like, did they catch it or not? Yeah. Right. And so um, anyway, I digress a little bit, but you know, one of the things that he told me about business, see so many people think that and treat business like a marriage. Mm. He said, they will take it to the ground for better or worse They will die fighting for it. He's like, they will fight for that more so than their marriage. And he's like, and how many people on the other side build something long enough to sell it, Mm -hmm. to watch it be envisioned, become something else or handed off to somebody that does bigger things. How many times have somebody built a platform and said, I've taken it to the highest level. You help me bring this to the next level. And when I think about that, and when he told me that, I immediately went to my relationships. 
I immediately went to thinking, what relationships am I building? Have I taken those to the highest level possible for myself? Yeah. And if I haven't, why haven't I? Mm. And then if I have, who do I connect them with to take off? us to the next level or to take that person to the next level to reach yeah. their potential mm. and when i started thinking like this as a business owner when i started thinking like this in terms of the connections that i want immediately it took off the pressure of sales mm. it took off the pressure of having to perform at a high level because at that point my mission was set my goal my niche was i need to take you to the highest level possible with me mm. to max out potential but I know that that's not where you're capped at. It just means that I've gotten you to where you need to go. Yep. And now you can go and vice versa, right? How many times do I tell you all these stories? Like, guess who reached out? <laughs> guess who called me, right? You know, like I'm working on this. Yep. And so you just, those things come back to what are you putting out there? What do you, you know, the relationships um, are going to be kind of like that Venus flytrap or, oh, yeah. you know, the catching you know flies with honey but there is a time when you have to like you said evaluate who's around you evaluate is somebody potentially limiting you mm. in regard rather than elevating you in yeah. your potential and then is somebody trying to just ride your coattails there's a hard line sometimes <laughs> to find because you want to help any yeah. and everyone the truth is is that um you can't help people who aren't willing to help themselves very very true so I would say if this is resonating or you need to talk to somebody, reach out to us. Uh, easiest way would be email. So the email is two, number two, native sons at gmail.com. It'll be in the show notes. Um, so the biggest thing is if you're needing help to get to that next level, reach out so we can assist and see what we can do to get you to wherever you're needing to go. But remember, this is your journey. So you've got to make that your desire. We're just here to help along the way. So other than that, we appreciate your guys' time and we will catch you on the next episode. Happy New Year, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in.